I told you they'd show up. I was betting you were going to be here. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, December 6th. Now, each day we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential to make us some money. Now, I'm out there day trading every day, and I see a lot going on, and at the end of the day, I try to bring you some juicy fruit. Now, I do trade both OTC and penny stocks, and they are different. There's a ton of penny stocks on the OTC market, but not all of them are penny stocks. The literal definition of a penny stock is any stock under five bucks. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. And there are stocks under five bucks on the major exchanges. So I trade those as well, and I like it. I do. There are three benefits I can think of off the top of my head for trading major exchange penny stocks. One, they're free to trade. There are no transaction fees. Two, you can trade them pre-market, after-market hours. Try doing that with OTC. And three, that's where all the money's at, is up in the big market. So yeah, I do like to trade penny stocks wherever they may be. Now, most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market because that's where you're going to find all your startup companies, stocks at such itty bitty prices that all it takes is a smidge to move and you've made a huge gain. Now, that news there, that all came from the OTC market. That's news I've personally read over the last six or seven days. Oldest is at the top, newest is down here at the bottom, and that is prime news, folks. That is the juicy stuff right there. Those are your mergers, your acquisitions, uplistings, bankruptcies, new technology, all that sort of stuff. So if you have to pop the video to read it, go ahead and pause the video. I'm not going to be bothered. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, this is where I come. The OTCmarkets.com website. I love this site. It's free to use. You don't even have to log in. And it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all that pertinent, important information we're always looking for. So don't waste your time running around the internet and Google looking for current information. Come here. If you don't find it the first time you looked, well, then go out to the internet. It's always waiting for you. Otherwise, this is going to save you a lot of hassle and a lot of time. Research. It shouldn't be a drag. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this and cross our fingers for a bump. We did get a little bit of a bump there. Yeehaw! Look at this, folks. We have hit our ancient high of $2.1 billion in the day. We haven't hit this in quite a while. It's been a couple months. Share volume. All right, it's nothing to get too excited about, but it is rising. We were stuck in the fives, worked up to our sixes, got into the sevens, and now we're just about ready to leave the sevens to go into eight billion. We are moving. And yay, what is that? Two days in a row that we have had our trades over 300,000. We have been stuck between 250 and 300,000 for too long. We need to get out of it. So this is two days in a row we have broke 3,000. So fingers crossed, we are getting a change of trend here. The OTC needs some love, folks. Needs some money, needs some share volume. God bless it, it needs some surging, don't it? <laughs> All right, I've got some interesting stocks to share with you, and of course, we are going to talk about MMTLP, but of course. First stock we're going to take a look at is on the New York Stock Exchange. It is the warrant for this stock, AAC, Ares Acquisition Corporation. Now, this is a SPAC a special purpose acquisition company, also known as a blank check company. Now these companies come onto the market with no business. They're not making any revenues. All they basically are bringing with them is a ticker. And they're looking to sell that ticker. They wanna make an acquisition or a merger. They need to consummate a deal. That's their whole purpose. And they're given a time limit to do this. 18 to 24 months, they have to find a deal. Somebody wants to go public. And if they don't, they liquidate which means they give back all the money to their investors. All the shares you bought, you get paid back for them. That's right, a money back guarantee. But when good news comes out on these companies, the stock itself won't move until they consummate and close a deal. So news like what we're looking at here came out, but they haven't closed the deal yet. All that excitement has to go somewhere and it can't go into the ordinary shares. So where does it go? It rolls over onto the warrants, and the warrants are always penny stocks in most cases, and with just a little volume, they make huge runs, and that's what happened today. AAC had news come out today, a deal. 
X Energy, a leading developer of small modular nuclear reactors and fuel technology for clean energy generation, is to go public via business combination with a Res Acquisition Corporation. So they've got a deal on the table that they're looking at, talking about, but they haven't closed it yet. Now here's some bullets about this, just so you have a feel for what the company's about. X Energy is developing a more advanced small modular reactor and proprietary fuel that can safely and efficiently deliver affordable zero carbon energy to people around the world. They are reaching an addressable market expected to reach approximately $500 billion by 2040 and increase to approximately $1 trillion by 2050. Yeah, so that would be a long hold if you're going to hang around that long. Uh, they are supported by $1.2 billion of funding from the U.S. Department of Energy. That's not to say they're getting that money. It's just that they're in the runnings for it like a lot of other companies. And they have estimated pre-money equity value of approximately $2 billion for X Energy, with existing X Energy equity holders rolling over 100% of their interest into the combined company. So everybody inside the management and all of them are excited about this deal as well. As who was the investors. Now you can't tell by looking here. This can't move until they close the deal. So it went up a couple pennies. But if you come over here and look at the warrant, you see nothing. <laughs> I know it's horrible. They got no information here. So let's just jump right on over to the chart. Yowza! Look at that Jolly Green Giants talk we got right there. Yeah, I'd say she had a good day. This is ticker AAC slash WS. AAC slash WS is the ticker for the warrant for a Res Acquisition Corporation. Now we are going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform you get just for signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. And your responsibility, just keep your account open. That's all you got to do to use it. So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart for this warrant. Six months ago, we were back here at 48 cents. Maybe two weeks ago, we hit a low of three and a half cents. And today we went to the moon. We took off and hit a high of almost 70 cents before the bell, all pre-market. She had a lot of volume come in today. Technicals are screaming. All of them are on fire right now. Our RSI is still red over the overbought at 72. Our MACD is a tsunami blowing over the beach and our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is literally pushing to the moon right now. Everything is hot on the four hour. 20 day, one hour view. So it was about a week ago, she got up off her lazy SMA and jumped up here to the 200, but not with a lot of enthusiasm and not with a lot of success. She went right back to her SMA bed and laid there until today when she jumped from a nickel up to almost 70 cents all pre-market. That's a 1,400% gains just that quick. And the great thing is you can take advantage of these plays. Yeah, it's pre-market, but this is on the major exchange and we can trade pre-market after market hours on stocks on the major exchange. Sure we can. You don't need any special permissions. You don't need any special qualifications. All you need to do is change one thing to make the order viable. When you place the order, it's not a day trade. It's an extended period trade. So you got to get EXT in your order. Day plus extension, uh, GTC, good till canceled plus extension, something with extension. Put that in there and you're in the game. Don't put that in there and it's just going to ignore your order. And if you don't pull it, it will probably go off when the bell rings. So she had a good solid run here. After the bell, she did drop and she has leveled off and she is still above her nine day SMA. All of our technicals are still very hot. Even our RSI is still in the overbought. They are showing signs of that pullback right now. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. So it was a very quick run here, folks. She was flat as a pancake, took off. We had a little bit of time after the bell that you could have sold if you had bought in here. But from that point on, she did fall the rest of the day, but calmly, it wasn't a free fall. She fell here from 70 cents and ended up down here at 53 cents with 937% gains. And right now, this is what we call consolidation. She's just going sideways, letting things settle down, actually waiting for things to set up. We're looking for a breakout now. Well, she has come back up 
to her 50-day SMA. And it doesn't look like we have a 200 here. Nope. 50-day is the strongest SMA on the board. It's going to try to get up on top of that. If it gets on top of that, we may see another run. Technicals right now. Ooh, let, let me zoom in on that PPO. I can't see it as thin as it is right there. So I'm just going to focus in on that. It is underneath and pushing down. Okay, our uh, ADX is kind of pushing up. Our PPO is pushing down. When I see this red line and the blue line coming together, it means the price is falling. If you see the blue and the red going apart, it means the price is going up. So there is some down pressure right now after market hours. And our MACD is pretty flat right now, actually. So it's a coin toss. What is going to go on right now? Now, I do have one more chart here I just want to show you. This is the company itself. The warrant got over 900% gains. The company today, because the stock is only worth $10 until they close a deal, had a little bit of movement, but they can't do anything with it. If they liquidate, if they don't close a deal within 18 to 24 months, they got to give all the money back to the shareholders for the shares. They're $10 a piece. So if somebody pushed this up to $10.15 and that's where they bought their thousand shares at, well, if this company didn't close a deal and had to liquidate, they'd only get paid $10 a share. They would lose that extra above it. And if you happen to buy it cheaper, you'd actually come out ahead because they would pay you the $10 no matter what price you actually paid for. So the warrants are big movers when these companies, these SPACs have news because the SPAC can't move. The warrant's the only place all the energy can go to. So when you're doing your due diligence in the morning and you see a company that's making a deal and you recognize that they're a SPAC, put that warrant on your watch list. There's a very good chance it could do this. Now, do I think it's going to run tomorrow? Well, there's a possibility. Let's go back just for one peak, let's go back one year. She was here at $1.10 one year ago. Right now, she's covered about 50% of that. She has a chance of getting back up here. We do have, let me see, I got the right line here. We do have a support right here. I can see that one right about that region right there. That's up at $0.87. Cents. And we just crossed this one. And you probably got a halfway point for this fall from the top to the bottom you find the middle and that's normally yeah right about there right where that green came up oh and we're right there so i would look for this to push up to 88 now that would be our next point it could come right to here first all right yeah 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 78 then up to 88 those are our target points. And this could push because this is the first piece of news. There's more coming. Then they're going to close the deal and everything's going to grow. So AAC slash WS. Watch it for tomorrow. Watch it this week. Watch it for when news comes out. Hot, 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 hot. This stock is hot. I'm not kidding, folks. This is Summit Therapeutics, ticker SMMT. It has been burning up the charts all day, and it is still flaming right now as I am talking to you after market hours, still climbing the charts. They had some news come out today about them, but it wasn't their news. It was a news press from another company, but they were mentioned in it. They've made a deal together, and it is exciting. But here's the problem. The news was written from the perspective of the other company. Company, everything they're getting out of this deal. They didn't tell us everything that SMMT is getting out of the deal. So we have to speculate, but they do give us enough information so that our speculations are pretty much, wow, out there and off the charts. And I'm going to share that with you here in just a minute. So they finished today at $2.31 and are currently at 194% gains. Now what they do, I'm going to let the news explain that because I'm not exactly sure how to explain it, but the news does a pretty good job of it. So what was the relative volume today around this news? Huge jump. <laughs> Went from about 200,000 shares to 147, 48 million shares. A lot of extra share volume around this company today. What is our share structure? All right, outstanding shares is 98 million. I had to go look this up and I've got it on another computer here so I don't get it wrong this time. They tell us that the float is 28 million. That's a really nice float. Probably helping this thing fly right now. Financials for Summit. 
All right, at the end of last year, they made $1.8 million. We know it's millions because we've got to take these zeros and put them behind any of the numbers on this chart. Now, what is really impressive here is take notice the cost of their revenue, nothing. They don't have to pay anything. So whatever it is they do, it's digital or consultation. It's something that doesn't cost them a bloody penny. So they got to keep every single penny they made. And on the quarterly, they're still making money. They're doing about a quarter million. Looks like they're falling behind a little bit here. Whoa, yeah, see? Yeah, there is a big drop here. But they are bringing in money regularly, and still it's free money. They don't have to pay anything for it. Disclosures. Now, surprisingly, they do have a fresh 8K about this deal, but they don't have a news press. The sad thing is, is that this 8K hasn't got a lot of information in it. Actually, there's more information in the news press from the other company. And even worse yet, the 8K does not inform us about the benefits of this deal for Summit. So all we're left with is the information we're given from this news press that came out today. Now, when you jump over here to the news, you can see that they have none of their own news up here. All of the news below is imported from somewhere else. And this is a Kiso Inc's news. Let's jump into that. This came out today. Keep in mind that this is a Kiso's news press. A Kiso Inc announces collaboration and license agreement for up to $5 billion with Summit Therapeutics to accelerate global development and commercialization of its breakthrough bispecific antibody, Ivan Shamab. Let's just call that the drug. <laughs> Akiso Inc. to outlicense to Summit Therapeutics exclusive rights to the drug for the development and commercialization in the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan. Akiso Inc. will retain development and commercialize rights for the rest of the world, including China. So Summit gets four huge strong markets, United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan, and the other company is going to keep the rest for themselves. They're divvying up the rights for where this drug is going to be geographically between themselves. Now, this is where we're going to get our speculative information, so pay attention. A Kiso Inc. to receive $500 million upfront payment from Summit. And the total potential deal value is up to $5 billion they could be paid by Summit. And Akiso will also receive low double digit percentage of royalties on net products and sales of the drug. The agreement provides for an expedited and winning pathway for the drug's global development by partnering with the world-class Summit Therapeutics team who has the track record of successfully bringing over a dozen indications to market for the first-in-class blockbuster drug Improvica. So the company's got some talent at getting new drugs taken care of, whatever it is that they do. Now hold on, I want one more piece of information to come your way and then I'm gonna speculate with you and see what you think. This drug is already legal over in China and Australia. It is a novel potential first-in-class bispecific antibody independently developed by the company. It combines the power of immunotherapy with anti-angiogenesis benefits of anti-VEGF into a single molecule. It is our belief that the novel divine has the potential to reduce side effects and safety concerns. The drug is believed to be the biospecific antibody that is most advanced in the clinic. There are no known PD-1-based bispecific antibodies approved by the U.S. FDA or the European Medicine Agency. Currently, Akiso is conducting phase three clinical trials on the drug. So that means they're coming down to the end of it. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly how the drug works and everything that it does, but as I said, they got a lot of information there. And if you really want to jump into it, be my guest. But they tell us what areas they get, what areas we get. They also tell us how much money that company's gonna make. Summit is paying them $500 million up front and has a potential in the back end of making a total of $5 billion. Now they tell us this is a royalty. A royalty is just a percentage of the big pie. They say low double digits here. I have no idea, it could be single digits up here, whatever. A royalty is a small sliver of the pie. Who has the pie? That's right, Summit. Summit has the whole pie. This company gets a piece of it. Their piece is a maximum of five billion. 
What's that going to leave for a summit? Oh my God, you can multiply it out. If they have 10%, then you got to multiply 5 billion times 10. That's $50 billion. If they get 20%, multiply it times 5. That's $25 billion. Whatever it is, it's a very huge piece of cake, right? It is humongous. But we don't know for fact. And that's why I'm saying it's all speculation. We need more news. And I would expect Summit to come out with their own piece of news here and not rely just on this other companies. Let's go take a look at that chart and see if it's still climbing right now. It is only 5.43 and we got till 8 o'clock. Ooh, what are we going to be at? Uh, we still got the same percentage here, but this has a time delay. Let's go check it out live. This is SMMT. We are looking at a five-day, five-minute chart to start because I want to see if she's still climbing. And at this very minute, no. At this very minute, for the last 20 minutes, as a matter of fact, she has been falling and she is now sitting on top of her nine-day SMA. But since the bell, she has had a lot of push-up and has hit a new high here of $2.78. Let's jump on back to that six-month, four-hour view. So we got a high bubble here six months ago of $3.47. Once she came down under that 200, she fell fast. She did get back over the 200 here and has been sitting up there for a while until here recently, the last 40 days, she got up underneath the 200 and started to fall, slipping further and further away until she hit this low bubble three days ago of 66 cents. And currently we're at 278, so that makes that a 300% gain since that low bubble bubble three days ago, one, two, two days ago, whichever way you want to think about it. All that volume with nothing to compare it to stands out big time. And look at our oscillators. Look at this. Everything is pushing up, folks. Everything is going to the moon and red hot. Four hour chart looks really good. 20 day, one hour chart, real flat under the 200, fell away from the 200, hitting that low bubble just worked her way up to the 50 and then today she launched. Everything looks super good on our SMAs and the technicals are outstanding. Everything is still on fire folks. Literally hot on fire. Five day, five month. All right, every day before today is nothing to talk about. She took off early and just kept running. She's bounced off her 50 day once and never looked back and has been hanging on to her nine day SMA. Dropped here after market to her nine day. Right now, it is dropping down to its nine day and pushing away from it. Technicals look like she's negotiating right now, but this is a lot of activity after market on this stock. So you can imagine what's probably gonna happen tomorrow morning. I think SMMT has more to go. There's news that's gotta come out so that we understand what Summit's getting out of this deal. But you can see if that other company Kios or Keys or whatever their name is, is getting $5 billion in the long run from royalties, what is this company going to have in their pocket? Woohoo! So, SMMT, there's more to come. We know that for sure. All right, we're ready to talk about MMTLP. We did cover this yesterday in my video. This is a very particular situation that doesn't come up very often that can make us some money. In a nutshell, MMTLP are preferred shares owned by Meta Materials ticker MMAT. And MMTLP is coming off the market by the end of this week. It will be gone forever and ever. Now there is a subsidiary that is connected with MMTLP that owns a lot of assets in oil. They have property in Texas. And here recently they supposedly discovered over 3 billion barrels of oil in the ground. So there's a lot of excitement around this basically for two reasons. They had a news press come out that said, when this goes off the market at the end of the week, any shares you own of MMTLP will be rolled over on a one-to-one -one ratio and you'll get new shares in this subsidiary, Next Bridge Hydrocarbons. But here's the catch. This is what's strange. These shares are not going to be on the public market. They're not going to be sellable. They can't even be transferred to your trading account. They're going to be private shares in a private company. I'm not quite sure what value that is if you can't cash them in. Now, I do know that they want to sell that property, those assets. They would like to get some money. They might even want to put it on the public market. I don't know. And then 
you would probably get your payout. But that's really not why we're looking at it. We're looking at it because this has a ton of shorts on it, a lot of borrowed shares that have to be returned before it goes off the market. There's something between 80 million, 150 million, 400 million shorted shares. We're really not sure, but we know there's a lot of them. And with shorters, they borrow shares, sell them, get their money, hope for the price to fall, buy them back cheap, put them back and they get to keep all the difference in profit. But if the price gets too high, it's like the price falling too much for us. They're losing money. And for them, there is no limit. It can just keep getting higher and higher and higher and they lose more and more and more. So they're forced to buy these shares. And there is a lot of activity that's going to come from all these shares having to come back in in the next couple of days. And today, I do believe we've seen our first short squeeze. They were driving this stock down all day and then it just exploded at the end of the day. What I have up here is a page that is on the OTC market. It shows you the most active stocks on the entire OTC. If you come over here and you click uh, right there, current market, it'll bring up this page. And as you can see, the number one traded stock on the entire OTC market, which there are 12,575 different companies, this was the number one traded company with over 13,000 trades today. That could have been 13,000 people. Maybe it was 8,000, maybe it was 6,000. In either case, that's a huge crowd of people around this stock. And that's when you're gonna get price action, when you have a lot of people involved. And today there was a lot of price action. So what I wanna do now is I wanna share with you my chart. I am playing this stock. I looked at it over the weekend. It looked good to me. I got in on Monday and I've been playing it and I want to show you what I've been doing. Whether you like it or not, this is just what it is and I want to share it with you. So we are looking at MMTLP. These are the preferred series A shares of ticker MMAT, Metamaterials. This is their oil asset subsidiary that they are spinning out into a private company by the end of the week and this ticker will be gone. Now we as investors, what we're looking for are all those short shares to come back in, 80 million, 100 million, whatever it is. And they've got a deadline. They've only got a few days to do it. And they've got to return them by buying them. That's how shorters do it. They get the shares for free, but they got to buy them to return them at current market prices. So if the prices are high, they start buying shares, the price goes up. More shorters come in, have to buy their shares. They got to get these done before this is taken off the market. You get a short squeeze and it just funnels up like a volcano. It just erupts like ape, like game. That is what a short squeeze does. And most people are talking about this hitting 60 to $80. That is a speculation, but it is a short squeeze and very possible. Now this is a six month, four hour chart. We've got nothing going on here until October and then everything just broke loose. I've got some lines drawn here that's gonna help us and you get to see all of my buy-ins, which is really what I wanna share with you. So let's come on right down to where all the activity starts, five day, five minute. Now. I was hearing about this stock a long time ago, started hearing more buzz last week, so I did a deep dive over the weekend. And come Monday, I wanted a position. Plain and simple, I wasn't negotiating the price, I wasn't looking for the best chart placement, I just wanted a starter position. So I was ready to get that first thing Monday. Now I did make a purchase right here on Monday, this is Tuesday, nah, get out of there. This is Monday, uh, Tuesday, Monday, and Friday. Now I drew a line here. Once I bought this right here, I went up and I drew a channel off of this point and this point here and just had it fall down. I didn't think the price would go below that. Now let's just come in since Monday. Here is my buy. Now I knew I was gonna be buying more than once. I don't buy all my shares at one time because what if it falls? I'm gonna feel horrible. I'm in losses and I can't even fix it. No, no, I build my position. So I was ready to spend $400 in whatever amounts it was. I was figuring between four and five purchases would get me close to 400 bucks. So I made my first purchase here of 10 shares at $8.29. She hung around that price most of the day with a little bit of dribble, but then she had a huge fall right Right here she hit this low and bounced up and she started to go sideways so I got in after two bars right there 
That was my confirmation of second bar. I got it 13 shares at $7. Now, I am trading this stock a little differently than I normally trade because I've only got so much time and I know the short is what we're looking for. So I'm trying to build my position. I'm not looking for the tear off right at these buys. Why am I saying that? Well, all these buys are under the nine day SMA. I don't buy my stock under a nine day SMA. You don't know if it's gonna go up or down. It's still under the first rung of the ladder. I wait until it gets one rung under its foot and I can actually say it's climbing now. It's on the ladder. But as long as it's under the nine day, no, I'm not confident. But in this case, I'm just trying to get my shares at the best price I can. I know it's gonna fall, but I don't know when it's gonna pop. And that's the problem. Once this thing starts to run, you're not gonna be able to catch up with it. We have to use limit orders when we buy a stock. We can't use a market order. A market order is like a hook. You just throw out there and a passing car grabs it, boom, you're on your way. No, we can't do that. We've gotta pick a price and when it starts moving real quick, you're going to put a price in and it's going to pass your price and you're going to have to do it again and it's going to be ahead of your price. The only way you catch that is to get ahead of the price. If you see it at 4.4 cents, you better go 4.8 cents and let it run into you. That's just getting in. And I don't want to play that game. So I'm trying to take advantage at her low spots before she runs. So she did cross over into the next day with a huge fall again. She hit a big low here and then bounced up. So I bought another position, 12 shares at $5.82. Originally starting off at what, $8.29. Then we had another fall because she's still under the nine day SMA. Don't expect it to climb until it gets on top. She came down here and she hit my trend line. Well, now I'm feeling confident. My trend line is where I believe it will not go below. And I got it right. She came down and bounced right off of that and went up. So I grabbed that position of 15 shares at $5.27. Now to make sense of the next purchase, we've got to go down to one minute. And to be totally honest, I buy and sell on the minute chart. When I'm interested in a stock, I'm watching it on the big charts, the one hour, the five minutes, but when I go to sell and buy, I wanna see every lean, every twitch, every wiggle, so I come down to the minute. So our very last purchase here went a little different than I anticipated. She did fall, she came all the way down here, and we are at $5.30. And what happened here is she broke the 50-day SMA. And I thought that was gonna be it. I said, this is it, she's gonna go. So I grabbed one more position. That's basically my 400 bucks. I think I'm at $383, something like that. And then she continued falling. And I was feeling a bit frustrated. I was, because I was working this and everything was working the way I wanted it to. We had a low here of $5. And then she started consolidating right across this channel, just floating across it. And then what I presumed was gonna happen back here, happened right there. Let me pull this down here, folks. That's the one minute chart. One minute. We went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minutes. It went from $5 up to $8.24. So we had a huge run there in just nine minutes. That's where a short squeeze came in. You can see all the volume here. All those shares were starting to pour in. Now I was watching this stock all day. It was doing about 50 trades a minute liquidity it was constantly moving the chart always had a blip coming up it was an easy chart to read because the volume was steady it just kept moving it's kind of like looking at water coming out of a hose you can tell how far it can go just by looking at the stream you can tell if they're going left or right but if the water's off you have no clue what it's going to do, where it's going to go, what direction it's even pointed before it's coming out of the hose. So I love to see that fluidity and liquidity. So we had a nice run today, folks. We are down at the one minute right now. Let's come back to five minutes. It was a huge push up through that 200 and we are right up here now at $8.24. Actually, we had a high of $9.70. Look at that, folks. She kicked 
into high gear right here. And as I said, we're expecting this to hit 60 to $80. There's a lot more shares that have to come in and now there's less time. Yeah, I'm expecting more of these. I am ahead. Yes, I am in the green. I could sell right now and take my profits, but I'm going to hang in there. Oh, and one other thing I got to tell you folks that I didn't mention yesterday. These shorters like to trigger our stop losses. If you're using stop losses, you're picking a line underneath a support like this here. You'd say, well, if it comes down below that, it's probably going to fall fast. So you'd have a stop loss right up underneath that line. Well, these shorters know that. So they push the price down by shorting it and they get it to go underneath your stop loss, which causes your shares to sell. Now, his he's selling shares, you're selling shares, other people who've got their stop loss right there are selling shares. He's created this avalanche of sales. So the best thing to do, it is risky, is not to use stop losses if you don't want shares to be selling. This is the way we force the price up. Don't give them advantage. So we've had one humongous bounce and we've got three days to go, folks. Get ready. I think we're going to get three or four more of these. Just a feeling. Well, my personal opinion, I think we got another great group of stocks here. Ticker AAC slash WS, the warrant for AAC. It had a big run today. Hit 1,400%, fell back to 930. Is it going to continue to run? I don't know. It's tough to tell with warrants. But I will tell you this. We've learned a lesson, haven't we? When SPACs get news, the SPAC stock can't move. The warrant moves, and the warrants move tremendously and quickly. So anytime you see news on a SPAC, grab up that warrant and put it in your watch list. Don't forget, those are some huge gains. Speaking of huge gains, SMMT, just about ready to hit 200%, was still climbing the charts in aftermarket. It is some big news. These little tiny nuclear reactors that can be sold around the world. There's a lot of information there and the stock is climbing. You got to watch that one tomorrow. I get a feeling she's going to continue to run. And of course, MMTLP, it is the big short play right now. The most traded stock had a huge burst at the end of the day, and I think it's just the first of many to come. And we've only got a few days left on this. Remember folks, DD is how I find these things. Reading, looking, sharing with others who like to share with me. I'm glad you're here. I enjoyed sharing with you. Remember folks, the more you know, <laughs> the more you're gonna grow. See ya.